Hi, I'm Dr. Kaplan I'm speaking to you from my Park Avenue, New York City office, and today I'm going to talk to you about Botox. Hopefully this will educate you so you'll know what to do when you meet your doctor and ask them for Botox, Dysport, or Zomin, the injectables that are used to smooth wrinkles on the face. I have over 18 years experience teaching facial anatomy at Cornell University School of Medicine and over 25 years experience of operating on faces, including total facial reconstructions after trauma. So I have an intimate knowledge of the muscles and the nerves that supply them with the face. In a moment, I'm going to take you over to a diagram and show you where you can have Botox and what the effects are so you'll better understand the injections. Okay, we're here with a diagram of the muscles of the face, and I want to show you what the effects of Botox are on these muscles, good and bad. On the top is the frontalis, the right frontalis, the left frontalis. These are the muscles that cause wrinkles in the forehead. Wrinkles are caused when a muscle contracts, and that muscle is perpendicular to the direction of the wrinkle. So the muscle fibers go up and down, causing a wrinkle that goes perpendicular to it. If you do Botox here, it will soften these wrinkles. However, you have to be careful because the frontalis muscle is also the elevator to the eyebrow. So you have to be careful. If you inject laterally, you can actually get rid of the wrinkles, but also drop your eyebrow. Usually, we inject in the center to go out here in a V-shaped pattern. This is the procerus and the corrugator muscles, and these are the muscles that cause the wrinkles when we frown. They also are the muscles that form the two elevens on the, on the middle part of your face. So injecting in here with Botox, you can do with almost impunity. This is the bicularis oculi. When it contracts, it causes the crow's feet. You can inject in here laterally, and you don't have any problems. But if you move towards your nose, you can get a droop or an atropion of your lower lid that most people don't want to have. Like this major and minor, they're used to elevate our upper lips. We do inject in here if there's an asymmetry in the face or if there's a Bell's palsy to try to get symmetry of your face. There's also the nasalis muscle, which is not clearly shown in this diagram, which can cause a puckering and a shortening of the upper lip. If you inject in here, it'll give you a more natural looking upper lip and a lip that is more in harmony dimensionally with your lower lip. On the lower lip, you can get puckering on the chin here. These are from the mentalis and the depressors of the lower lip. You can put Botox in here safely, but you cannot put Botox in all the way across. Otherwise, your lip won't be able to contract and you might drool. But you can put a little bit on the corners, here and here, and that will soften the mouth and also stop you from getting those lines that turn down as well. Finally, you can inject the platysma muscle, the right and the left, to get rid of the bands in the front part of the neck. I hope this was helpful for you, and now you'll know what to ask your doctor when you go to get Botox. Thanks for watching.